For many people, tatami mats are a nostalgic symbol of Taiwanese history. Once ubiquitous, they became less popular with changes in people's lifestyles and the rise of modern home furnishings. Now there are fewer than 20 tatami workshops in Taiwan. One of the last tatami masters in Tainan was facing the prospect of his skills being lost to history until his grandson made an unexpected decision. Let's meet Taiwan's youngest handmade tatami craftsman in our Sunday special report. Okay. Oh. Tainan craftsman Li Zongxun is delivering homemade tatami mats to a customer's house. He's already dripping with sweat from single-handedly bringing six mats into the house. But then, he spots something that makes his hair stand on end. The size is wrong. Now he has to work out how to get it fixed by the next morning. They're short-handed in the tatami workshop. They managed to convince a seasoned tatami master to help them oversee the production line. His father handles the orders. But though Li Zongxun can handle a heavy workload, it will be a hard ask to find the time to solve this. Taiwan's tatami industry wasn't always this way. In those days, all public dormitories used tatami. The police, schools, many places. In the heyday of tatami manufacturing, there were more than a dozen tatami workshops in Tainan. Now, only about three are left. Ten years ago, this workshop's master, Li Jinshui, reached retirement age, and none of his four children would take up his mantle. It seemed the shop was about to become history, until the master's grandson, Li Zongxun, unexpectedly decided to commit himself to the world of tatami. Although his grandfather had been named a national tatami master, the 19-year-old Zongxun originally had no interest in the traditional craft. While he was a small child, his father went to work in China. Zongxun went with him and attended school there. I grew up in boarding schools and went to lots of different schools. I saw my father kind of like a magic money tree. Honestly, you'd ask for money and get it just like that, but he wouldn't pay much attention to your studies. In 2007, I was 19 and I was about to graduate from vocational college. I got a letter telling me I had to come back to Taiwan to prepare for national service, so I came back. That was how grandfather and grandson were thrown together, never having been particularly close before. An octogenarian getting up to work at 5 a.m. suddenly shared his house with a teenager who slept all day and played video games at night. There was constant friction. I had no money, so I did what I always done. I asked my folks for money. Grandpa gave me some too, but after he'd given me money several times, after a couple months he started to have a go at me. After Zongxun finished his military service, he hit a wall when trying to find work, because his education in China wasn't recognized anywhere in Taiwan. At his grandpa's bidding, he started to learn how to make tatami. He had a simple trick to tell if you'd been slacking off. He tugged the mat like this and then say, nope, too loose, tear it up. Just don't bother at all if you're going to cut corners. I'll always do 24 or 26 stitches. You've done 14. Are you trying to give me a heart attack? This is going to be sold for $900 and you're just mucking around with it. His grandpa was always there telling him he was doing it wrong. He didn't want to do it. The kid ran away from home and didn't want to be bothered anymore. He left it for his grandpa, and he was sleeping in a video game shop. Then, we went and brought him home. Zhongxun couldn't break with his family, and he had nowhere else to go. After leaving home several times, he decided not to run anymore. Then I made a decision. I'll master it and get rid of him. Back then, I had this really negative attitude. Fighting. Fight them to the end. Then when I had finished my fight and learned how to do it, I felt different again. As Zongxun was showing our crew how to make tatami by hand, a pair of young people entered the shop. They were exploring the old streets of Tainan, and the scent of the workshop's rushes drew them in. Zongxun showed them how tatami is made. From 
In 2012, Li Jinshui passed the old shop that he'd run for more than half a century on to his grandson. Some TV stations asked my father what mark he'd give his grandson. He said 80 percent. Knowing my father's character, I'm sure that getting 80 percent means you're up to standard. When we asked Li Zongshun why a man in his 20s would want to persevere with a job like this, the answer he gave was profound in its simplicity. The things you least want to do are the things you should do the most. I first had to become my grandpa. Then I learned how to remain myself. I became him so I could go past that and then feel grateful to him.